Hey y'all, down here to the basement, going to shoot a little video for a couple of good buddies of mine on here, Mossy Back, uh, Wayne, and uh, St. Williams III, William. And they asked me asked me to uh, do a, a video a while back, man, but I'm sorry, fellas, uh, I, did, I just got busy and I didn't have time. Um, actually, I haven't even had time to really shoot video on my jobs I've been doing. But uh, needless to say, i uh, got a little time today and uh, be glad to do it for y'all. And what uh, the fellas were asking was what it took for me to... Uh, to, I guess, get to where I am, where I am today. You know, uh, owner of a HVAC company. I'm a Kentucky HVAC master contractor here in the state of Kentucky. <clears throat> I know Wayne. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, William. I, I, I forgot what state you said you lived in. I'm sorry about that. But uh, I know Wayne uh, lives in uh, uh, Carolina, and I'm sure y'all might have a few different hoops you might have to jump through. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be close to to what I'm doing right here in in our state. If not. You might want to talk to somebody like Quan with Eagle, Eagle Tech, or you might want to talk to Talon, or you might want to talk to Buck, or, or one of them great fellers. They're all Carolina fellers, and, and they're good people, so I'm sure they wouldn't hesitate to uh, give you a hand. So, uh, But I'll, I'll tell you what I have right now. I'll be glad to. All right, y'all. Uh, I reckon I, I started out in the state of Kentucky. You have to apprentice for two years before you can apply with the state to become a journeyman. And then once you uh, meet that criteria, uh, you have to do a minimum of two years, to, and then you can apply with the state to get your master's. Um, I guess I took the long way around, or I just, uh, I, I was enjoying what I was doing too. But uh, anyway, I started out in a trade as a, I guess it was a laborer. I actually worked like in a shop at first, and uh, I guess they wanted to see if I was going to stick around or not. And uh, what I was in charge of was uh, insulating duck. And back in the day, we used to have to internally wrap this stuff. And I'm sure some of the older fellers on here know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I actually would get the metal off the, off the layout man's table, bring it over and cross break it real quick, then bring it back to my table. And then I would insulate it. And I'd, I'd slather this nasty glue on there that smelled like you know what. And then I'd have to lay my insulation on there. And by, then, by that time, I... My hands looked like I was the straw man and just covered in insulation. And then I'd take it over to the break and then I'd break it, and, uh, 90 break it, and you know, and then I'd start stacking it and getting ready for the fellers that are actually out in the field working. And, uh, but anyway, um, did a lot of installing. That's mainly what I did. But anyway, uh, it didn't take me long to realize that, you know, I wanted to be out in the field. So what it is, is you have to have an employer, a master, has to actually apply with the state and get you an application sent to you for an apprentice card, which is right here. All right, as soon as I received my apprentice card, they also sent me a, a nice little pretty diploma, registered HVAC apprentice. As soon as I got my apprentice card, I went straight out and I got my Type 1, Type 2 EPA certification here. Okay? And basically, I apprenticed for one, two, three, four. Those pretty pink cards right there. I apprenticed for four years under some... Pretty good journeyman. I worked for a tool or two, but uh, thing is, let me tell you something as a journeyman, you, I mean, as an apprentice, I'm sorry. You need to learn everything you possibly can from your from your mechanic, from your journeyman. Um, like I said, there's some tools out there, but generally most of them are pretty daggone good guys. And they're going to ask you to do stuff where you're going to go, oh man, you know, I really don't want to do that. But let me tell you, son, uh, every one of us, anybody that's worth his salt had to get in those crawlers. They had to get in those attics. They had to crawl through the nastiest stuff and make you throw up. You know what I'm saying? I remember working down on the river where I had to tape my pants legs shut because I was afraid rats was going to crawl up in there. But anyway, or working in a 140 degree attic and you think you're going to pass out every 10 minutes. But anyway, there's my preaching for that. Just I was just, you know, just a little respect for the journeyman. But uh, anyway, all right. So did more I met more than my criteria with the state I did four years in this apprentice as soon as I got my confidence level up now you personally not your boss you personally have to apply with the state yet now it's on you now you're the man you personally have to apply with the state to get your your journeyman's card okay once you meet that criteria they see that you met this criteria here you can uh, start studying for your tests and we'll get to that I'll show you the textbooks and all that good stuff all right so once I got my confidence up I went and tested did my four-hour open book test, and oh, that's another thing too, man. Uh, just because it says open book, man, it ain't like you can just, you know, trust me. If you don't know the books, you're screwed. That four hours will be over so fast, it'll make your freaking head spin. But anyway, all right, so once I got uh, once I got this, 
I went out and I went straight in and I got my universal EPA and I've been carrying that ever since. This allows me to work on anything. And just for giggles too, I went to that uh, mainstream engineering corporation and got this R410A certification. But this universal certification, that covers it all. But uh, I'd say 99% 9% it covers. But anyway, there's my journeyman's uh, HVAC mechanic diploma they sent me as soon as I got my card and my pride and joy what I really love is this one right here my master HVAC contractor and don't want to get off on a tangent so but I was told that I'd never get that there's no way I could get that and by several of my peers no I mean they actually belittled me in in a parts house and that went through me like you would not believe I I want to share this with y'all I, I don't care and it went through me like wildfire and I tell you what buddy there ain't nobody gonna tell me that I can't do something if I set my mind to something there ain't nothing I can't do and I'm here to tell you all that too don't let in don't ever take no guff. don't be disrespectful but don't ever take no guff off nobody telling you that kind of stuff because that them type of people they're ugly people they're nasty people and they know they are now I think that may have been uh, uh, they don't want the competition crap or they're just ugly nasty people because they're not uh, all ugly nasty because there's there's a couple of companies that I work for that actually patted me on the back hell I even bought a truck from them you know and they were actually proud for me but anyway I'm sorry to get off on that but anyway my point is don't let nobody ever tell you that you can't do something if you have dreams and goals and aspirations you go for them and don't take no guff from nobody while you're doing it okay all right sorry about that but anyway, I did my eight years of this, so in the, in the eyes of Kentucky, you know, I've done, did way past my two, so now it was time for me to petition the state, and I did, and I went, and I took my test, and I passed it, and here's my master's right here, this is, I'm so proud of this, guys, it ain't even funny, uh, Rochester's heating and air, baby, but uh, passed my master's test, now this master card here, uh, if you just carry the master, this allows you to purchase equipment, pull permits and advertise now to actually be out in the field and putting stuff in you have to carry a dual license Now a lot of guys don't they just carry this master and then they have employees I, I eventually want to have employees too don't get me wrong I don't want to get huge or nothing but I'd love to have like three or four fellers working with me now, I think that would be fantastic but right now I don't so it's just me so I carry this dual license so whenever I go out and I talk to my, my customers and everything I, uh, you know, I, you know, tell them I carry both licenses, and I'm not just as, you know, I, I find out what they need, and I let them know that I'm actually coming back, and I personally, Fritz Rochester, is coming back in to install this stuff for you. But anyway, all right, uh, sorry about that little outburst there. I, I truly apologize for it. I just, I don't know, must have had to get it off my chest or something. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, get after brass tack tax here and. Uh, We'll look at some of the text that uh, I was required to use, and 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 oh my lord, you're gonna uh, just bear with me. I'll, I'll show it to you here in just one second. Just bear with me. Okay, y'all, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, we're down here to the table, and I've I've got my uh, the required textbooks for uh, taking the journeyman, the Kentucky journeyman, and the Kentucky master uh, HVAC tests here. That's what's required here. But I'm pretty sure that these these are the reference books for probably just about any testing facility uh, they're actually International Code Council books um, and that's who actually puts well there's a, a testing facility we have like Pearson view here but they the ICC dictates uh, you know what textbooks are required and that's a funny little story too I told y'all that uh, I I probably took about nine months prepping for my master's and I don't know what made me do it, but I called the testing facility just to double check on my text because what you can you're, you're required to walk in with those texts. But uh, they hadn't changed the textbooks in almost 12 years, and I you know just went out and bought. Well, there's the, there's my other ones up there, and I went out and bought like uh, I guess it was around 400 dollars, maybe more for these textbooks. You know, plus I bought tabs and everything to go with them and everything. And two weeks prior to the test, I called. And uh, guess what? They changed the text. 
So now I had to buy this new modern refrigeration and air conditioning uh, book, this textbook here, and I don't see any real difference in it other than it's green and it says 18th edition on it, but you know, it is what it is. So I just had to break down and bite the bullet and buy new ones. But anyway, um, I had to utilize this international mechanical code book. I had to utilize this international fuel gas code book, and I had to utilize this uh, national electrical code book. Um, I bought tabs for all of them, tabbed everything. That way I could speedily go to a system, you know, like uh, ventilation, uh, refrigeration, you know, just anything, you know, that would. Like if they asked a certain question, it'd spark my memory, and I could just you know grab a tab and start looking. But you have to familiarize yourself with this. Um, we were allowed to highlight here, but uh, anything anyway too. Uh, I was actually allowed with my with my modern refrigeration text. Most textbooks have like a blank page on it. You were allowed to make notes. There's a blank page in the front, and there's uh, I believe two blank pages in the back. So I made myself some notes, and of course the testing uh, supervisors are going to look at it and make sure that everything's legit and you didn't stuff something in here, you know, like a cheat sheet. But yeah, there's like some of my uh, highlighting, you know, stuff about compressors, yada, 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 uh, different stuff, stuff that I thought would be pertinent. And uh, actually uh, right here in the back, I, I got like a quick size uh, duct systems, you know, pipe to CFM to duct. Uh, bunch of stuff bunch of stuff uh, combustion air stuff uh, the Ohm's law chart that really came in really handy so as you can see I took my time drawing all this stuff out and believe it or not that's the way I learn stuff by drawing stuff you know it sinks in my mind a lot better I don't know if that sounds crazy or not like you know like when I was first coming up you know uh, to kind of dig my uh, electrical stuff I'd, I'd actually draw out my systems and what I was doing you know um, I don't know, it might be kind of silly to some of y'all, but that's just the way my mind operates. It helps me learn more, you know, because you took the time to actually draw everything out, you know. Um, let's see. Back in the day, uh, the state of Kentucky would actually send you out like a HVAC contractor's practice exam, and they actually sent out uh, journeyman's practice exams also. They quit doing that. Um, the only extra text for the masters, I had to get one extra text. It was a, it's called the Kentucky Contractor Business and Law Reference uh, Manual. And with this, I, I suggest you read this real good. And I made my own little uh, uh, tabs for it. You know, it's got like contracts in it, safety, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's even got stuff in there like if a cu customer referred to pay you, which we hope will never happen to any of us, but it does happen. Yeah, but I, I know what to do if that happens. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, this is done through the International Code Council. So y'all could probably get online and look that up and actually find your particular area. Um, you know, I took it to the next level. Like the test questions that were in the, uh, the, uh, the Modern Refrigeration Air Conditioning book, I actually wrote those questions out and answered them on my own little answer key. So... I don't know, guys. Maybe uh, maybe I go a little overboard on stuff, but uh, and get yourself some you know some other texts, you know some manuals and stuff, man. Any little bit of things help, and there's help out there. You just got to ask, you know. Um, I hope this helped you all out a little bit. Um, I'll be glad to help you any way I possibly can. I know what it was like trying to do this. I, I certainly do. Um, I really didn't have a whole lot of help. You know, I had to depend on myself, but I had a couple of buddies that that helped me out. So. But anyway, like I said, um, be glad to help you. I hope this helped you some. And uh, record will holler at you soon. Thanks for watching now. Take care.